Hi guys and welcome to the handover of video of the fantastic Corrado T447 So on this vehicle starting at the front in the cab area we have your fill up point with your diesel fill up point which is at the top here which is lockable with this vehicle key if we move to the back we've then got your water filler point your water filler key is this key which is the same for all of your habitation door locks so anything that's got a lock is locked with the same suited key which is separate from your vehicle key key slots into there turn it and then that enables you to fill up with water push and twist this you've got a vent uh, which is just basically a vent for your um, water tank and then we've got here which is your vent outlet vent for your water heater moving to the back you've got your back locker drain point for wastewater is directly in front of the back wheel and then you have this point with the waste outlet which is there and then this device which goes directly onto there twist and then that opens your wastewater tank so that basically is just this device which is inside your cutlery drawer moving to the back of the vehicle we've got your rear camera which has been mounted to this in particular vehicle and then this one's also had an awning which has been fitted to it as well here we have your gas bottle tanks so your gas bottles fit into that compartment and then your toilet cassette is within here toilet cassette push push to lift and then that reveals your cassette your cassette you pull that out lifts up you have a device which then pops up so you can roll that around when you're empty in the tank you untwist this cap remove the cap and then push this button as you're emptying that out like so and that basically just releases the siphon and allows it to pull out when you're then filling the tank back up you fill this jug to a certain extent with the chemical and then pour it into there you can use tablets if you prefer and then when you're putting it back ensure that that caps on and then slide that back in like so that pops in just ensure that when you put it back in that that handle is located within there and then finally lock that too like i say your gas bottles are inside there they need to be turned off for traveling there's a regulator that's mounted to the bulkhead we've got other instruction manuals which are in this part inflation kit uh, which has got uh inflation solution inside there and also a compressor box for your tv and your carpets for your rear habitation area awning winder which is here which is available which will send you also on a separate link for uh, for the awning and then this is your centre rafter which comes with every awning which is 4 metres plus you've got your light which can be switched on and off from there and then you've got a mains power socket inside your garage these tie down, po tie down points you can twist, loosen off and then slide them along like so on each side you've got three on each side and then this finally is your vehicle toolkit which has got your jack and wheel brace and your towing eyes and things like that in there these catches just twist to lock each of them turn the key and push in and you'll notice then when it's locked they stay in when it's unlocked they pop out so to unlock twist pops out to lock, twist it, lock it and push in. These vents, are your fridge vents, those you'll notice will get slightly warm when you're operating the fridge, whether that be on gas or on mains and that just allows the transfer of heat. And then we've got your finally your mains plugging point where your mains lead plugs into there and to remove that simply pull out. In the driver's area, 
we've got height adjustment on the driver's seat and passenger seat also if you lift that front of the seat pops up if you lift that back of the seat pops up handbrake is on your right hand side we stand the switch gear which is here we've got heated wing mirrors lock the vehicle internally and unlock the vehicle hazard lights on there and traction plus which is here speed of your dials for your temperature outer collar is your temperature inner dial is for your speeds uh, then you've got recirculation or intake for air in the direction of the air and then the top button is for the cab air conditioning indicators are on the left hand side wipers on the right hand side this lever below it is for your speed limit and your cruise control twist to switch on twist to switch off passenger airbag there then you've got an additional glove box uh, which is just above glove box at the bottom as well and then drinks holders within there finally we've got this lever which pull and then that gives you uh, your uh, steering wheel which can lift in and out your bonnet pull for this vehicle is on the passenger side and is located just here you lift that that pops the bonnet the instructions for inside and underneath the bonnet and things are available in a separate video again like we say with the passenger side you've got exactly the same and then on each of these seats on each of these seats there is a swivel mechanism which is here you lift that to swivel from there as we say details of all the fuses and which fuses watch is underneath uh, for underneath the electro lock, the e-box which is underneath the passenger seat all that's in, inside the instruction manual on this particular model it's also got the vehicle specific sat nav uh, which has been fitted as an optional extra details and instructions of how to operate that uh, are all inside the manual now stepping inside the vehicle uh, we've got the vehicle which is manually locked using the key which is that same suited key we step inside the vehicle and I've just removed the cushions on this so I can show you straight away uh, the fresh water tank. Fresh water tank is located underneath the forward facing double seat. We've got an access point here where we can remove this if we want to get in to clean it. So we can remove that tank, top, we've left water in this for the demonstrations of this video. That basically you can get into it so you can clean it. Pump is submersible, drops in through there if you ever need to exchange the pump you remove this. Your pump then drops uh, out from there and it's a submersible pump. Drain valve for your fresh water, for draining down for winter, is on there. Or if you're ever draining it down for sanitisation purposes. Twist that, and then the pump then basically will just drain out from there. To close it, twist it too. And then that'll lock. Right to tighten, left to loosen. Simple as that. Halfway through, you'll feel a lug on there. And that lug is basically allowing it to drain down to 20 litres. This final device which is here is your water sensors. Uh, every now and again you can get false readings off that if there's ever de any debris on them sensors uh, or if there's any condensation uh, that forms on it sometimes you can give you a false reading. Just very much an indicator that that's giving you it isn't um, kind of as accurate as you would get with a fuel gauge. Um, so that's pretty much everything under there that's your fresh water tank. So um, just going back to the vehicle and the actual camping enjoyment that you'll get out of the vehicle. So. You've got on site, you've plugged into mains uh, and you know you're plugged into mains, you know you've got mains power coming in because this light has indicated that you've got mains power coming in. Dead straightforward on this unit, you've got on and off, uh, as straightforward as you can get. These buttons here are indicator buttons, so press the top one, shows us the level of our leisure battery, currently plugged into mains, there's currently a charge going into it. So we're showing green lights, we're showing 13.5 volts. When we'd be unplugged from mains, normally we'd end up with sort of 12.3 volts from there. Next one down shows our level of our fresh water tank. Push that, we're showing that we've got a full tank of water. All them LEDs have gone on. So we have 50, 75, 50, uh, 125. Uh, and those will light up accordingly, depending whereabouts the water is on the probes. And then this next one is our level of our wastewater tank. We've got about a quarter of a tank in there. So we've just got that one LED in, on from there. So those on that side for, uh, tests, this one on and off. And this light if it doesn't light up, then we've not got mains plugs coming in. Uh, so you've got lights throughout the vehicle, various light switches. These main light switches, which these lights will remain on 
all of the time irrespective of that control panel being turned on these lights will turn on and off with the control panel these lights are light courtesy lights so you need to turn those off of those light switches there next to uh, the control panel we've then got your heater control panel so we have your heater control panel to turn on you push that wheel in like so you've got various different icons which are below this line so a picture of a thermometer inside a van if we push the button in we can cycle that and it can turn it and we can switch it to whichever temperature we want like a thermostat to confirm any setting we push in to confirm and that confirms we'll just move this icon here so it doesn't go into failure one to electric so as you'll notice now i've selected 30 degrees on there put it to 30 degrees so the vehicle is now going to go and try and heat to 30 degrees for us if you'll notice that anything things or icons now have appeared above the line so we've got a little picture of a flame to indicate that it's now trying to heat up two lightning spikes that it's going to heat up on electric and it's showing that it's going to try and heat up to 30 degrees so that's taking care of the, the the vehicle and it's going to start to warm up now using mains power next icon we can choose to heat the water so we can go for eco off sorry eco which is roughly 40 degrees hot which is roughly 60 to 65 degrees boost which is still 60 to 65 degrees but we'll do so at the detriment of the blown air heating so normal use we'd kind of put it into hot unless we get on the campsite and we want hot water quicker we select that we're selecting it to hot so now you'll notice that that's gone up and both these are flashing now these will flash until it gets the temperature once it gets the temperature on either the water or the blown air it'll continue to flash once it stops flashing it's at temperature what we can then do is we can choose which fuel we want to heat it on so we can use a combination so we can use gas and gas only mix one so it's a mixture of gas and one kilowatt of site electricity mix two which is gas and two kilowatt of mains campsites electricity el1 which is just purely one kilowatt of electricity only or el2 which is two kilowatts of electricity we always use two if we can we only use one kilowatt of electricity if the campsite site has got a particularly poor supply uh, and you'll be able to know that because it'll be tripping the campsite out all the time finally then we've got the speed of the fan so we can have it on eco high or boost again with that if we select boost it will heat the vehicle up at the detriment of heating the hot water the system's called a combi heater now it's not like a combi heater at home it's a combi heater in the fact that it'll heat a combination of the air and the hot water so um, it will take around about 35 minutes to give you hot water don't expect to get instant hot water like you do with a combi boiler at home gas it will heat it quicker than it will do on electricity and bear in mind it is mains electricity and not 12 volts so it won't work from your battery it'll only heat up through your um if you're plugged into mains or if you're running from gas the battery is literally taking care of the blown air uh, and it's the fan aspect of it um so we've selected high uh, we've selected the fuel we've selected to heat the water and we've selected to to heat the vehicle what we can do also we can go into the timer module so we can set an on and off time so uh, an end time and a start time from there and then the little picture of the clock we can set the actual time um, that it currently is so for instance on here we'd set it to four o'clock as it is now uh, so you just literally scroll through that cycle that wheel and select from there and then finally we can go into this uh, settings we can go to an offset so we can offset the temperature change the brightness of this screen change the language if you really want and finally if it ever fails you can click reset um, that reset then will go on to PR set it'll then turn off and turn back on if it's ever failed and come up with a certain fault code you might need to do that reset um, once you do that you then need to wait 15 minutes and then you can uh, start to operate it from there so normal use that's how it'll operate it'll just cycle back to the time and the temperature and just go to and from there once you've initially then set it up if you ever get up in the middle of the night or you ever want to turn the temperature down just turn that wheel push to confirm it and it'll set from there and it's all done and dusted next we've got your fridge to turn on keep hold of that button 
Simplest way to operate it, to be honest with you, is just to put it on A for automatic. And as you see that there, you push that button and it'll put it in A for automatic. We've plugged into mains, so it's now selected mains. We can manually override it, so we can choose to go for mains, select it ourselves. Select battery, as you'll notice now, it's gone into a fault code. It's flashing a little spanner and a number. Basically, what that's saying is we've, we, the engine isn't running, so I can't work off battery. This fridge is three-way. It'll work off mains. Battery when you're traveling, gas as well. So mains and gas if you're camping, or mains or gas, sorry, if you're camping. Battery when you're driving, and only battery when you're driving. It won't work uh, from the battery if you're not driving. So you can manually select each of the services from there. But A for automatic is the simplest method. If you've not got mains, it'll then look for gas. This next one, we can select the temperature of your fridge. Three or four is about enough. Anything more than that, you end up with frozen lettuce. And then this device is, with that turned on, what it will do is it will very gently warm this area. And that basically is if you're in a particularly frosty area or anything like that, stops the, the frost from forming here and this door freezing too. So if it's ever stiff, if you ever can't open that door, literally turn that on and then that basically will then heat that area very gently just to prevent it uh, from freezing the door too. And then inside here we've got your shelves, your fridge compartment and there, and then your different shelves within there. Also, if you're leaving the fridge for any length of time and you just want to vent it, pull this out from here and then lock that to that area and it just leaves it open so it stops any stale smells forming inside your fridge. Just be mindful it's not a domestic fridge, it's a, it's a motorhome fridge. So um, it will cool down uh, and will cool down sufficiently in most temperatures. Uh, if it's very, very, very hot, park the vehicle the opposite way around from the midday sun so the sun isn't hit, hitting the, the back of that fridge area. Um, and also don't overload that fridge door. There is loads of space in there, but six pints of milk and two litre bottles of Coke and things such as that, it is a motorhome fridge. So just be mindful that you're not putting too much weight on that door so you're not going to bend the hinges okay so moving uh, to uh, to the back of the vehicle into the uh, kitchen facilities first time that you filled up with water you'll need to prime the water system when you turn it on to cold literally you turn that it'll cough and splutter for a second and then it'll run clear your hot water turn the tap to hot and lift up if the water system hasn't been primed, then it'll cough and it'll splutter from the boiler. In essence, what that's doing is it's pulling 10 litres of air out of the boiler and replacing it with 10 litres of water. Once it starts to run clear like this, then you know that you've then got 10 litres of hot water inside that tank. And then it's ready to be heated. So at the moment, basically the water that's in that tank is going to be heating uh, as we're showing you this video. Once it runs clear, like I say, it's all fine. You've then got your three burner hob. Your three burner hob. You turn like so, keep it held down, light it with a match or a lighter. Once it's lit, release it, and then you can adjust it. If you release it too quick, the flame will go out. So it's got a flame failure device, which you built into it from there. We've then got your oven and grill. To light your oven and grill, same principle, turn to the large flame, keep it held in, push to light. Once it's lit, release it, and then you can adjust it. And then you've got your temperature settings, which are on there. And then you've got one way for grill, which is that way or the other way for oven within there and then you've got that space when you're operating the grill just pull that out a little bit and that just protects this from the heat and obviously with your grill do so with it open and that closes too now we've got these gas stop valves really there's nothing for you to do with those those are there for us to test for it so we can test each of the individual appliances you'll see a little picture of an oven a little picture of a heater icicle and a pan indicating oven, heater, fridge and hob. Uh, that's really for us to test each of the appliances but also if one of the appliances does develop a leak then you can isolate it like so. These are now in the on position. We do advise that you always turn off and it is law that you always turn off at the gas bottles directly on the vehicle. So you've got a mains plug uh, socket here which is live when only when you're plugged into mains and then we have a 12 volt socket which is live all of the time. We then also have another mains plug, which is here, and then these light switches, which are underneath. 
to open these lockers, push that down and then lift up like so. And we've got your storage in there and then we've got your grill pan and wire, which is for your, your grill in there. Moving to the back of the vehicle, we have your shower compartment with your duct board. And then you also have this hanging space, this hanging rail, really handy for if you've got any wet clothes, just to hang in that shower compartment. For traveling, make sure this is locked back. And then obviously before you pull the, the shower screen, pop that off and then your shower screen can close too. We have your toilet door, which also doubles as your ensuite door and locks too from there. Then we have your toilet, your flush, and your kitchen bowl within there. Then you also have a mains power socket directly underneath. To flush the toilet, push that button, and then that flushes like so. And then to release, push this catch towards you, and then that opens the contents into the bowl. Light switch directly under there. And then you have some storage which is within that compartment and hangers which are there. To operate this door just twist and that locks too. Then got storage at the back. This section pulls out if you want to form a massive double bed and then that's your additional uh, cushion for that and then those are your ladders to enable you to gain access into there. We then have storage within here which is your hanging space with that hanging rail. Light fitting on there. And then we've got storage inside here. Now one thing inside this compartment, you can just get some light in to show you. is you have this device. Now this device is for your heater, that's for your water heater. Uh, now that is currently in its closed position for normal use and normal operating use. If you are ever wanting to drain that down, you do two things, you twist, and as you twist that, you'll notice that that button has popped out. So to close it, twist and push. If the temperature ever drops below six degrees, that will automatically do that. So um, sometimes if it's very cold and you're trying to operate it, we always advise that you turn the heating on first of all, have the blown air heating going for a short while, just to take the frost off the temperature uh, and, and then close it. Uh, but when you're closing it, you need to do them two things. So twist it and push it. If it's ever popped out, then it's just gonna drain down. And in essence, basically, as soon as you're uh, running your pump, your pump is going out your cold water tank into this boiler, but that boiler then is draining out onto the floor outside the vehicle. So always get into the habit of making sure that's closed because it becomes quite frustrating of wasting all that water that would have been underneath it. Always ensure when you're storing it for winter that you've drained down that boiler, uh, that that's completely drained down and also that your fresh water tank, which I've shown you early on in the video, is drained down as well. Any questions on that, on winterising, we'd always much rather you ask us uh, for advice rather than just second guessing. You've got some curtains which are here which can close this area off. Obviously you do have that solid door as well. We've then on this model we've got a drop down bed and to do that, you literally push that and then the bed drops down like so. And then you've got those ladders which are on the back which then hook onto there. Just if you're ever leaving the vehicle, again, for any length of time, just get into the habit, if you're living in storage, you're just dropping the bed down a touch, so it just allows that area to air and just uh, just sort of stops any sort of stale smells and, and, and air and allows that circulation. You've got roof vents throughout the vehicle, all the roof vents operate in the same way by pushing that button in and then pivoting that up. And that's the same for each of the smaller roof vents as well. Each of your windows have also got blinds and fly screens built into them, like so. And then to open those windows, push in, and they pop out like so. They lock in, so to bring them back down and to close them, lift up, 
all the way and drop down. You do have on each of them a partially vented but secure position as well. On the back rest of these seats, you've got two USB sockets. 3 point seat belts are located here to enable you to lock any kids in or adults in safely. And then you also have a fly screen on your habitation door. Just to ensure that if it's particularly windy and the door's slamming short and things such as that, that you've not always got that in the closed position because you don't want to damage that fly screen. You've got a few bits of storage into double floor access from here. And then you'll notice a few different ducts around the vehicle, which is where the heat will come out of. And then you've got storage, plenty of the compartments, cutlery drawer, things such as that with your plugs inside there. As we said earlier, these seats swivel just by pushing that like so, and then the seat will swivel around. And then around the cab, these curtains close too. Underneath this rail, you've got curtains either side. This particular one, like we say, has got the satellite navigation with DAB digital radio. DAB digital radio is just in that front, uh, and then you've got that from there. Finally, you've got this big, beautiful uh, roof light. This, you loosen these off, like so. You've then got handles either side, again, with these push locks. So just ensure you're pushing those in before you loosen them off. You've got three of them in total, total at the top and one either side. So five in total. That lifts up like so. And then tighten this up. And then that holds on each side. And that holds it. Again, if you've got a lot of wind that's coming from the opposite direction, just be mindful that it acts as a big sail. And then, like I say, you've got a blind and a fly screen on here as well. But you can leave those again in the secure position, but vented position, if you so wish. We always say to people, have a good look around the vehicle, have a good play about with it. When you get it home, get the fridge cool, get the heating on. Uh, and then if you've got any questions, you can always give us a call. But pretty much that's everything uh, on all of the vehicle uh, on behalf of everyone at MB Motorhomes. Uh, we hope you enjoy it and uh, thank you very much for your business and we look forward to seeing you soon.